Hey guys, I think this article is really good. I hope you guys like it. I'm going to read it to you in case some of you aren't exactly the reading types. Um, say you're listening to the podcast and you're on the road or you're just, you like watching the YouTube videos. So here it is. It's titled, New Study, Implicit Racial Bias is Real. We've all seen the headlines. Researchers say too many Twinkies can harm your health. Uh, yeah, no kidding. How about this one? New study suggests a link between drugs and crime. Really? You don't say. I believe the headline for this article is just as ridiculous. To explain why it will require me to be totally unpolitically correct, there will no doubt be some who label me as a bigot and a racist, so be it. If you're one of those people, at least read the whole article before you send the hate. There is a silver lining at the end. Implicit bias, racial or otherwise, is a real and immutable fact of life. Implicit racial bias occurs when we subconsciously make decisions about each other based, to whatever degree, on the color of each other's skin. And guess what? We all do it. How this claim is controversial is beyond me. Every single one of us sees each other differently because we're different. Many of us choose consciously to treat each other fairly and equitably. But this doesn't mean we aren't subconsciously reacting to each other based on outward appearances, including skin color. Now, I don't pretend to understand the complexity of biology or especially the inner workings or any workings of the human brain, but we are animals at our core. We cannot and will never completely escape the natural hardwired instincts we all have. To believe we're above such things is arrogant and stupid, in my humble opinion. As a former police officer, people often ask me what they can do to keep themselves and their families safe, to sniff out danger before it materializes. That how do I get out of the gas station before the robber pulls a gun kind of scenario? Well, the simplest and most useful answer I can give is trust your gut. Now, obviously, I'm not suggesting our gastrointestinal tracts can think. They obviously can't. What I'm telling them to do is trust their instincts. We don't consciously process every bit of information coming into our brains because of sensory gating. Our brain, thankfully, allows us to effectively ignore much of the noise around us so we can focus on what we think is important in that moment. Now, this doesn't mean, however, that other stimuli are completely ignored. In fact, one reason people often get a really bad feeling just before something bad happens is that their brain is receiving stimuli that suggest there's a looming threat, even if they're not consciously aware of it. I'll try to visualize this as I read it. You're at your local gas station filling up a 64-ounce mug of Coke or whatever floats your boat. You're not really mentally present as you ponder your crappy day at work, why you hate your boss, how much you need a vacation, etc. It's a big mug, so you're spacing off for a while, but your peripheral vision is picking up on something, and you don't notice it consciously. But to your right, near the Twinkie section, the guy in the gray jacket is telegraphing that he's about to rob the joint. He's pacing slightly, his hands are hidden near his waist, and he's clearly not looking for Twinkies. And maybe he read that article. But something about his posture, maybe it's the sharpness of his eyes as they dart around the store, says he's hunting. This information is getting trapped in the sensory gate because you're not focusing on it, but your subconscious begins sending you the something isn't right signal. You feel butterflies in your stomach. Weird. You ignore your gut and stare into the fizz, still dreaming of a distant tropical getaway, when you realize everyone around you is hitting the floor. The robber, luckily for you, is just there for cigarettes and cash and leaves everyone's lives, although shaken, largely intact. After the suspects get away and police arrive, your adrenaline subsides and your brain begins to start thinking clearly again. Only then do you realize that you saw it coming. You knew something wasn't right because of your implicit bias against men in jackets aggressively pacing around convenience stores not looking to buy anything. Now stop right there. What does the suspect look like in your mind? Is he white, black, Hispanic, covered in tattoos, sporting a mullet, dreads? Maybe he's bald, wearing a hat, a ski mask. What does he look like? Now, what does this tell you about your assumptions and biases? Maybe it tells you nothing. Maybe it tells you everything. But don't feel bad about whatever you discover. Just acknowledge it. And we shouldn't ignore our instincts because we're afraid of being prejudiced or racist. We should acknowledge them. 
and determine if the bad feeling is warranted based on facts and evidence, and act appropriately. We should be checking our bias, making sure we're not making assumptions about people that aren't fair. It's a balancing act to be sure. Not too much stereotype, not too much gut denial. A lack of balance here is very bad. On one hand, you're blindly ignoring survival instincts, valid ones, at your own peril. On the other, you're blindly accepting false prejudices based on those instincts. Now, neither of those is fair to your fellow man or woman. Now, I'm not excusing unjust treatment of any societal group by the police. That would be immoral, and that would be disgusting. I'm only pointing out the fact that we will never get rid of implicit bias because it's something we all have and always will. It is part of our human nature, a survival instinct that is immutable, irremovable. If this is true, then the only way to truly change the way the police interact with any given group is to change the characteristics of the group. For example, police officers shoot and kill black men at higher rates than they do white men per capita. But if we ever want those rates to be equal, those societal groups, including their cultures, yes, I said it, it has to do with culture, it's not politically correct, but it's true, must also be equal. And when you hear about a shooting on the news, what do you assume the perpetrator will look like? Young black men in America are responsible for a hugely disproportionate percentage relative to their population size of violent crimes and gun violence. So is it wrong for your imaginary suspect to be black? No, it's not. It simply reflects the reality of gun violence in America. Now, what we're completely missing in this debate is that issues like America's gang problem, black-on-black -black crime, and black violent crime rates play an important role in our implicit biases. We're focusing on whether or not a bias exists, as if its existence proves something is wrong. Well, it does exist, and something is wrong. But the problem isn't necessarily the bias, rather the reality that bias is based on. Statistics are not the whole story. The statistics alone are enough to make any rational person more likely to believe a young black man armed than one of another race. Add to that the backdrop of a crime-ridden inner-city neighborhood full of gangs, shootings, drugs, and violence, and this becomes even more likely. But for cops, this is not a statistical and therefore theoretical discussion, especially for officers working in those inner-city neighborhoods with those problems. Police officers are the ones collecting the data points that provide the statisticians something to analyze. They're responding to the constant shooting deaths and dealing with the ingrained distrust, disrespect, and hatred for the police. They are the ones pulling guns off of young black boys, yes, boys, because gangs like to use minors as their shooters, too young to legally drive a car. Cops don't need a statistician to tell them who's more likely to have a gun and use it against them in the inner city. They've seen, survived, prevented, and responded to gun violence at the hands of more young black men than men of any other race, not because they want it to be that way, but because it is that way. The biases we're seeing in statistics reflect that reality. Research indicates cops are more likely to incorrectly believe a black suspect is armed than a white one. It is a natural consequence of the real problems in our black, especially inner city communities. In fact, the same research, as well as other independent studies, shows that black officers are more likely to shoot unarmed black suspects than white officers, which indicates this trend is not necessarily about racism, but implicit biases, including one's skin color. If systematic racism was driving the data, white officers would be in the lead on this statistic, but they're not. Now, I can already feel the hate mail, the racist white mother effort comments and the like, but please read the entire article. I'm not saying police officers are always right. They're not. Cops, more so than anyone else, must be diligent in checking their bias regularly to prevent true racism and hatred from taking over. What I'm saying is we all have implicit biases and we'll never get rid of them. It's part of the human experience and not unique to any one profession or any one segment of society. More importantly, it is the result of real and valid differences between those segments of our society. We're not all equal. And that sucks. Don't get me wrong, I believe every life is priceless and equally valuable. I just wish 
We all grew up in nice neighborhoods, with good schools, with involved mothers and fathers, without drug addictions, mental health issues, poverty, and the threat of violence. Obviously, that's not the world we live in. And until it is, police officers, like their civilian counterparts, will continue to treat each segment of our society differently, based upon their actual and perceived differences. In communities struggling with violent crime, rampant gun violence, and hatred of the police, officers will continue to use deadly force more often. In communities that support and respect police officers, the opposite is going to be true. This isn't a message without hope. In fact, it's quite the opposite. If changing police treatment of our society requires society to change, then it's not up to someone else to affect that change. It's up to you and me. The only way to change the subconscious reactions police officers have when interacting with people like you is to change the experiences those reactions are based on. You can't force another human being to ignore their survival instincts, but you can change what those instincts tell them. If your community is hateful and uncooperative toward the police, be outspoken about your support and appreciation for what they do. This is a bottom-up approach. It only requires you and I to take responsibility for our own actions, which is all we ever had control over in the first place. When enough people in your group show that they have changed, so will the treatment of your group by everyone else, including the police. Now, to summarize where we're at here logically, implicit bias exists. We're all different, and we see those differences. Number two, we can't control our innate subconscious response to those differences. Number three, Biases are based on real and perceived characteristics of other people in groups. Number four, if one through three are true, the bias isn't necessarily the problem. It's the negative characteristics of the group that need to change. And number five, it is up to you and I to change the status quo of our own groups. Now, that last point deserves a few closing comments because this concept doesn't just apply to African Americans. It applies to all of us. We are all being subjected to the biases of others. It's not wrong, and you can't be mad about it, because you're guilty of the same thing if you're a human being. All we can do is change the bias one person at a time, and by changing ourselves, changing part of that group. Now, white people can show they care about minorities by paying attention to how they're treated and standing up to injustice when it's seen. Cops can prove they're not racist by putting in the extra effort taking the extra time to get to know their community members on a personal level and helping whenever and wherever they can. Maybe it means stopping at a young man's house to see how he did on a math test, hopping out of the car to play some pickup basketball, or just taking a few more seconds to explain to a family member why someone's under arrest. Every little bit helps. We all know the negative stereotypes that go along with the groups that we fit into, so I don't think I need to list off, you know, every possible scenario The point is, whoever you are, if you don't like the implicit biases, the stereotypes applied to you and those like you, change yourself and the bias will follow. That's it. That's the whole article. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. It's not about justifying the differences we're seeing in the way that police treat different parts of our society. It's really just thinking out loud about the realities of why those differences exist and one way that we can change those differences. It's utopian, but um, all we can do is change ourselves. Uh, We all have control over one really important thing, and that is our own actions and our own attitudes. So thanks, guys. As always, do good, be strong, fear nothing. This is Police Academy.